what do you all think about removing primaries when you can? Is this important when you have metastatic disease? So Tony, what do you think? If, uh, is this something you're, you're going to want to do in the incurable metastatic patient or uh, not? So uh, the, the clear answer to this right now is not present, but uh, uh, for practical purposes, purposes, I would say not. I mean, the data, uh, uh, the more recent data suggests that we, patients do as well, whether you keep it in place or remove it, although there's some intriguing data that suggests that patients may do better if you do remove the primary. But I think that since we have such effective first-line chemotherapeutic regimens and biologics, that the primary response as well as the rest of the disease, and there's really, at this point of time, I think no role to remove the primary and keep it in place. Charlie. You know, this is really confusing because we see a variety of studies saying that it's not necessary to take out the, the primary, and then other studies that say that patients who have the primary removed may do better. But they're all relatively flawed studies. The answer is going to come because there are two randomized trials conducted in Europe where they're randomizing patients with metastatic disease to getting the primary out or not. And so until those studies come in, I don't think we really know. But I agree with Tony. I, I wouldn't ordinarily resect the primary unless it's necessary. Yeah, I think um, any, any differences? You all pro-resection, anti-resection? Oh, I mean, I agree with Tony's point that only patients that would re we would resect up front if they're symptomatic, they're bleeding, they're near obstruction, are the only patients that we would take the surgery. Otherwise, I agree, an asymptomatic patient, the data is not out there. So we would start with chemotherapy first and see what happens. You know, what if it's, what if it's a you know, near obstructing rectal? You going to take it out? Are you going to divert? Or are you going to cross your fingers that chemo is going to work? Um, it depends how bad it is, right? Yeah. And, that, and that's the million dollar question. I mean, I think that it's, it's very reasonable to think of a diversion approach. It's also very reasonable to think of a chemo radiation approach if you've got liver only disease too, because where it even complicates this more is in a resectable patient potentially mm. who's got liver only metastases. And is this somebody where you're going to take out the primary in a staged fashion or treat the primary in a staged fashion and then go after the metastatic disease? Yeah. So we talk a lot about liver resection, and of course we're all comfortable with maybe the isolated or the very small oligometastatic stuff, but, but you know the bar is moving. I mean, what's the wackiest thing you ever recommended being removed? Oh, so many things. I don't know if we have enough time for that. <laughs> but we, I mean, but, uh, we've had people do mediastinal no, lymph nodes you, you, because it's isolated disease, and is uh, that crazy or not? Absolutely. So we've, uh, we've removed isolated lymph nodes uh, in the abdominal area. And actually, it is interesting, once you establish an isolated uh, area anywhere in the system, uh, we've tended actually to uh, uh, to remove it if it's if it's safely removed, and uh, you know again, uh, in the absence of randomization, can really tell you that we changed the biology of the disease or whether the biology was so indolent that it presents just in a single site. Uh, but we've done it, and we've been able to spare patients chemotherapy, uh, you know, until recurrence. We we don't technically cure. Uh, non-liver metastatic disease. It's rare. So you don't think you maybe isolate a lung, but or you think not? Just you liver know, only biology. You think? I think isolated. I, I mean, again, if you hear experiences, isolated lung uh, uh, patients with isolated lung metastases may actually have prolonged survival, but uh, but but I think we those patients do recur at some point, uh, and most liver. Uh, patients also do recur. I mean, you do provide them with an extended disease-free survival and likely a prolonged survival, uh, but whether we're truly curing most of these patients is, is unclear and questionable. Where are you all, Charlie? You know, I think there's a subset here that we recognize we don't often discuss, or the people we see, first see, we never even contemplate resection mm -hmm. because of multiple mets, and then they have a great response mm -hmm. to therapy, and you're asking the question, well, I know I saw multiple lung mets, multiple liver mets, I don't see them anymore. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe I should ignore that first CAT scan, look at today's CAT scan, and send them to resection. And I suspect all of us, maybe not, are often referring those people to surgeons. I am realizing I don't think we ever contemplated we'd be doing that yeah. five years ago. Yeah, and I think, uh, at least for me, the, the surgeons that work at our center are more comfortable, if you will, sort of pushing the surgical envelope. But I think a lot of community surgeons may be less comfortable. So is, is this a message we should be sending that, you know, in the right patient when, you know, to consider this kind of uh, 
more aggressive surgical approach? I think with the more aggressive surgical approach, it's important to get a surgeon who is used to doing these types of resections, mm. a surgical oncologist or, or a surgeon who, who has a lot of experience doing these liver resections or these isolated resections, because the last thing that you want to do is take somebody and send them to a surgery where they end up having a significant amount of morbidity and mortality that ends up costing the patient in the end. And I think Charlie makes a really good point in the era where we're sending more folks to potential surgery, knowing the biology of the disease mm -hmm. really is something that you wanna know. So giving those few first cycles of chemotherapy and seeing what kind of response the patient's gonna have, you have that one isolated lesion that just sits there for a long period of time, or they look disease-free for a mm -hmm. while, and then they have one isolated thing that pops up, that tells you a little bit more about how that patient's gonna do if you take them to the operating room.